Good morning, good folks. Friday, April 24th, Pastor Dennis Tedder, and I'm once again sharing my morning reflection time with you. I'm reflecting on that phrase that we're using a lot. It's probably losing meaning because we're overusing it, the new normal. That may sound like fingernails on a chalkboard to you right now, the new normal. One friend called it the new abnormal. Of course, that's a reference to our current situation, some of the new measures we've put in place to contain virus and to adjust our lifestyle, but it's really, there's no routine uh, that we can depend on. We're not sure when things will return to normal, and we're pretty sure they won't return to the way they were completely. And that makes me think of a word from the prophet Isaiah long ago to Israel at a time when Israel had lost, um, they'd really lost everything. They were in exile as a consequence of losing their way. Um, uh, sinful behavior and a neglect of their faith. But uh, things had gotten so bad that they thought they would never have their lives and their homeland and their worship. They would never have a temple again. Their temple, the Solomon's temple had been destroyed. And so to them, Isaiah speaking God's word, God speaks through Isaiah this, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm doing a new thing. Can you, can you perceive it? I'm making a way back through the desert across um, the distance so that you can return from exile back to your home, back to being Israel in covenant with God again. And so for those people in exile, that what they probably envisioned with this word of the promise of a new thing was a return to the old thing. Oh, we'll, we'll rebuild Solomon's temple and we'll restore our lives the way they were. Um, some of that thinking when Isaiah brings this promise of a new thing that they're to perceive was, well, um, some nostalgia, but not particularly accurate. They were thinking, we'll get the same old life back, a retread, a reboot. But that's not what Isaiah, what God was saying through Isaiah. This new thing was a truly new thing. They were not simply going to restore the way things were, which weren't that good. It resulted in exile. In truth, Israel never rebuilt the temple to the glory of Solomon's day. They had no more real kings in the manner of David and Solomon. There was, there was Israel, and they had some sense of identity, but they never did really have their independence again. The new thing is not always like the old. In fact, that's what makes it new. It's, it's not the same old, same old. And that's true for us in exile, not truly exile, in isolation. Um, our old lives, um, we know, aren't going to be the same as our new life. What is God preparing? What is the new thing God is doing for us in our isolation in this time of being in a wilderness, uncertain time? For people who follow the way of Jesus Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ, I'm one, I'm part of a community that is Christian. Um, we're mindful that our new way of life is, is very different from our old way of life. Following the way and the word and the will of Jesus Christ is, is truly new and different. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, the apostle says to the community, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. That's a big statement. If you follow the way of Jesus Christ, if you commit to Jesus Christ, to the discipleship of Jesus Christ, to discipleship, you're a new creation, truly new. It means change and putting away some old things, letting go of old things, venturing into the old known, relying on the way that Jesus prepares, often through the wilderness that we face. So I'm thinking very much about the newness we're in and the newness to come that God is preparing for us. I'm doing a new thing. Can you perceive it? Well, in part. But in Jesus Christ, through faith, I trust that way. I want to close with a poem that's a prayer. It's from a book, Prayers for a Privileged People, by Dr. Professor Walter Brueggemann, an Old Testament scholar. Um, prayers for a Privileged People. He's writing and preparing prayers for us. Israel was a privileged people, and they lost all that privilege a long time ago because they failed to tend to their faith. But in this prayer, he's praying at the end of the day, and I'm going to, with apologies to Professor Brueggemann, adapt this somewhat 
for the beginning of the day, my morning reflection. We name your name in gladness. We ponder the world you have called good. We relish your gift and your task. We marvel in amazement. Yet one more time at the wonder of this Easter Jesus who has died and is alive among us. We pray onward. Now we are homebound. In the morning, there comes anxiety and demand and conflict and inconvenience. Except that all things will be, yet again, made new. Make new by your spirit. Make new the church where we live. Make new the public reality of justice among us. Make new the practice of compassion in our neighborhood. Make new the surge of peace in our violent world. Make new the policies of our government and the workings of the church. Make new, and we will be an Easter joy, unafraid and unweary, your glad people, carrying among us the marks of the death of the old and the new life of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. With thanks to Walter Brueggemann. Good folks, God is preparing a new way, a way through this wilderness in which we find ourselves, this, this new time. But there's new good to come. God bless.